is Father Hayes with another one of our videos on our series on the Mass. Today I want to talk about that the Mass is a mystery. In fact, in the Missal, which is the official prayers of the Mass, we all hear at every single Mass, at the very beginning of Mass, let us call to mind our sins to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. So the Mass is one of those sacred mysteries. Remember we talked in an earlier video about the Mass takes place in the church, which is sacred space. Well, the Mass is a mystery. It's a sacred mystery. What do we mean by mystery, though? I think that's the important thing for us to tackle as well, because a lot of times we think of mystery as a puzzle to be solved, a whodunit. If we can just find that one clue, then everything should make perfect sense. And so a lot of times people struggle with their faith because they think it should be simple and understandable. And the problem is we are dealing with a reality which is bigger than our ability to fully understand it because we're dealing with God and God's revelation of himself. And God is, in his nature, infinite. He has no boundaries. But you and I are finite. We're limited. We can only do one thing at a time. I can only stretch so far, right? I can only think of one thing at a time, and I have to learn things in progression. I can't be a rocket scientist until I learn basic arithmetic, that two plus two equals four. So a mystery, first and foremost, is that we are dealing with a reality that's bigger than our ability to fully understand it. But God wants us to not simply know that he exists, to know about him. God wants us to know him intimately and perfectly. And within the Mass, he wants us to, number one, participate with him in that perfect sacrificial offering of the eternal high priest, but he also wants us to enter into communion with him, that the two become one flesh. And so we have to see this in the context of mystery. And so one of the things I encourage you to do as you're at Mass is train your ear to listen for the word mystery. There's several times in every Mass where you'll hear the word mystery, as I mentioned the example of the penitential rite, but also in some of the daily Mass prayers, the prayers for that specific day, you'll hear reference to mystery. So here's the analogy, the image I give for mystery. Everybody has been to the beach. Everybody knows of this thing we call the ocean. Now, imagine that this is the very first time you've ever gone to the beach and you've never seen the ocean before. But imagine that as you're standing on the beach, as you're standing on the sand, it's pitch black at night. So you can't see anything. You know there's something out there, though, in front of you. Now remember, you've never been to the beach before. There's no lights out, there's no moon, there's no stars, there's nothing but darkness. But you still know there's something out there, right? Because your senses tell you there's something out there. You can smell the salt air. You can hear the surf. If you're close enough, you may even feel the, the water on your feet. So then let's imagine that the sun begins to come up and this image of this big body of water is appearing before you. And then finally the sun's at its highest point and you can look all the way out to the horizon where the sea and the sky meet. And you see this big giant body of water in front of you. Well, the question to ask is what's changed? Has the ocean changed? Or has your and my ability to perceive it changed? So then let's imagine that, because it's the ocean and it's the water is there, that you go and you start swimming around. And let's imagine that the water is very clear. You can see in the water, maybe you're in the Caribbean, for example. So after a few minutes of swimming around, you begin to realize that there are things in the water with you that we call fish. So now you realize that this big body of water is also a habitat for life. Then let's imagine that a friend of yours comes along with a boat and says, let's get in the boat and go all the way out to the horizon and see what's past there. Let's see if we fall off the edge. So you get in the boat and you're going 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 and you're going. And after a while, you recognize that the horizon's not getting any closer, but the, the land is getting farther and farther away. So now you have a horizon in front of you and you have a horizon behind you. You realize this body of water is much bigger than you originally thought. What's changed? 
Has the ocean changed? Or your experience of it, your knowledge of it, what has been revealed to you about it? So let's imagine that you've got some diving equipment in the boat. So you put that on and you go swimming again. But now, because you're deeper, you can go farther down. And you realize that this big body of water is much deeper than it was when you were swimming close to the shore. And you're swimming around and you see lots of different kinds of sea life. You may discover coral reefs. And you may even discover a sunken ship from, let's say, the 1700s. Right? That ship's been there for about 300, 400 years. So now you realize that this big body of water is much bigger than you thought, it's much deeper than you thought, it's a habitat for life and a wide variety of life, and it's got history to it because that ship's been there for several hundred years. What's changed? Has the ocean changed or your knowledge of it, your experience of it, what has been revealed to you about it? Now in all of this, you've only explored a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the ocean. And keep in mind too, when you started, you were standing in the dark on the shore, just hearing the surf and smelling the salt air. So this is an image I hope is helpful for you to recognize not only in your participation in the mass, but in our study of the faith, right? Which is God's revelation of himself to us, that we're dealing with an infinite reality because we're dealing with God himself. We're dealing with God sharing with us, revealing to us who he is. And the more that we know, the more that we take in, the more we're gonna realize we don't know. So that's what we mean by mystery. And so when you're at mass, train your ear to listen for that word mystery because it's all through this book because our faith is a mystery properly understood, and the Mass is a mystery properly understood.